Okay, so um, the tangent ratio. Um, first, let's uh, just define what trigonometry is. Uh, we've already been doing some trigonometry. Trigonometry is a branch of mathematics dealing with the study of triangles. Okay, so maybe you thought you knew everything about triangles, but there's so much more. Okay, all right. So um, a trigonometric ratio, well, a ratio is a comparison of two numbers, usually written as a fraction, but can be written with a colon as well. Okay, so um, a trigonometric ratio means where it's a comparison of two sides of a right triangle. Actually, it doesn't, well, yes, for now, we're going to deal just with right triangles. Later, we'll get into other triangles. But, um, yeah, so we're going to be looking at comparisons of two sides of a right triangle, okay? So, um, got this three, four, five right triangle um, drawn here, okay? Um, and um, we're gonna talk about um, the tangent ratio, but first let's just define these parts, okay? So you've always, in a um, right triangle, you've always got a hypotenuse. Very important that you know which side is the hypotenuse. The longest side It's also opposite the right angle always, okay? Um, so then I've got two legs, and you could call one of them, in this case, your short leg, and one of your them your long leg, and sometimes I'll do that, but when I'm talking about um, trigonometric ratios, I'm gonna do that in a different way, okay? So before I define, um, I, I talk about what I'm gonna call these two legs, let's talk about what the tangent ratio is. So we know it's gonna be a comparison of two sides of a triangle. It's gonna be the comparison of the two legs. So um, here is what it is. It's gonna be the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Okay, remember the word adjacent means next to. Very important to understand that. That's a term that comes comes up a lot in geometry. We've seen it a lot already. And it's really going to help to understand um, what's going on with these trigonometric ratios. Okay? So on part A here, we're going to write the ratio. So we're going to write a fraction, a compare two numbers, and this says tan A. I would never out loud say tan A. This is tangent A. So, you know, on your calculator, I'm not going to use the calculator yet, but there's a, a tan button. But any mathematician who says tan out loud will get laughed out of the, out of the building. Because um, that's tangent. We call it tangent even though it's just a three-letter abbreviation for tangent. Okay, so this is the tangent of A. In other words, this is the tangent of angle A. Okay, so when I'm looking for the tangent of angle A, that means I'm going to be thinking of the triangle from the perspective of this corner of, of angle A down here. Okay? So I'm going to draw a little stick figure because I'm just going to pretend I'm over here because I'm at A looking at this triangle. Okay, So then I've got a leg over here and I've got a leg over here. One of them is going to be opposite and one's adjacent. So the opposite leg is the one across from you. So from this perspective, this would be my opposite leg. And then this is the leg that's closer to me, so this is the adjacent leg. Okay, So... Um, the hypotenuse, yeah, it's adjacent, but it's not a leg. I'm just talking about the two legs, okay? So for the tangent for A, when I'm over here, opposite is the three side. So that's going to go in the numerator. And adjacent is the four side. So that's going to go in the denominator. And then all I have to do is make sure this is reduced. You want to leave this as a ratio. Don't write this as 0.75 because then it's not a comparison of two numbers. A ratio is a comparison of two numbers. But you do want to reduce it. So that is the tangent of angle A, okay? That's the ratio that the opposite leg is to the adjacent leg, okay? So when we move over to um, angle B, that just means our, so here I'll underline this like so, just for color coding. That means not at this corner anymore. I'm going to be at angle B, okay? So there I am now, blue. Blue over here. So the hypotenuse will still be the hypotenuse, but now this leg will be the opposite leg right, because that's across from where I am, and then that means this would be the adjacent leg, okay? So now when I'm doing opposite over adjacent, opposite is 4, adjacent is 3. So instead of 3 fourths, I'm going to have 4 thirds, and that 
also is reduced. And don't write that as one and one third. We want to leave it as a comparison of two numbers, so as a uh, an improper fraction like that. Okay. And then let's look at C. So let's say I move down to. So I'll color code this one too, just to tell you we remember where we were. So if we go down here, and I'm looking for opposite, remember it's not just opposite side, it's opposite leg. So opposite, uh-oh, I don't have a leg opposite where I am here. Okay, so opposite leg, well, the opposite leg, there is no leg that's opposite, okay? And then when I think of um, adjacent leg, that's the leg that we're next to, but those are both, both of those legs are next to me, so I don't know what to put for that either. So um, this is going to be um, undefined or no solution or something like that, okay? So um, when we're doing these, um, these trigonometric ratios, for now, it's just a tangent ratio, but there's other ones later. I said undecided because I was talking about the same time I was writing, but I meant undefined. Um, so, or you could put no solution. But this is only going to work from the um, acute angles. You're never going to be able to take the tangent ratio from a 90 degree angle because you don't have an opposite uh, leg, and you don't. You have two adjacent legs to choose from, so it's just not going to make sense. And for that reason, it's not going to be defined. And later on, when we're using a calculator, you might get an error message in a calculator if you uh, try to figure out what a tangent ratio is from a right angle. OK? So let's try this one. You could pause it. It's the same kind of a problem. OK? So first, I'm thinking, all right, I'm at A. So I'll color code again. I'm at A. So I'm thinking opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite would be 15 and adjacent would be 36. Okay, now this I can reduce, so I want to go ahead and do that. I can see um, 3 is going to go into both of those. 15 divided by 3 is 5, 36 divided by 3 is 12, and I can't reduce that any further. So 5 twelfths, not 15 36, even though they're equivalent. I want the reduced version. Okay, then when I move to B, when I'm down here, now the opposite is 36, the adjacent is 15. Okay, and I'll reduce that again, and it reduces the same way this one does, right? So it's going to be 12 fifths. Okay, and then again, when I'm down here at C, that means I'm at the right angle, and I don't have an opposite leg. I have an opposite hypotenuse, and that's not part of this deal, so this is not going to work, so I'm just going to say undefined. You can't take a tangent ratio from a right angle. Okay. All right. So now let's move into the world of calculators. So you're going to need a scientific calculator. Now you can probably use your phone as a scientific calculator. What you want to find are, how do you know something is a scientific calculator? This is a graphing calculator, and that's great, but you don't really need a graphing calculator for this chapter. What you do need is a scientific calculator, so you want to find a calculator that has sin, cos, tan buttons. Actually, sine, cosine, tangent buttons. We're only going to use tangent for now, but we'll be using these two very soon. Okay, so if you have those and you're in good shape, you can find them online very easily if you don't have a calculator handy. Okay, so... Um, this says evaluate with a scientific calculator. Okay, so I'm going to take this off screen for just a second. Okay, so I typed tangent of 83 in my calculator twice. And, oh no, I think my calculator's broken because I got different answers. How could that possibly be? Well, I'll show you how that can be. It's because I had the calculator in different modes. So it's super important that you know how to change the mode of your calculator. And if your calculator is already in the right mode, you can just leave it like that. And if no one else is using the calculator, you'll be in good shape forever. Okay? But um, this is in degrees. There are different ways to measure angles. There's radian. Um, measure of angles, which we'll get into later, but we're so far we're 
just going to use um, degrees. So that means I want my calculator in degree mode. Okay, now this might be different on your calculator if you've got a different calculator, but for a calculator like this, I'm going to hit the mode button right up here. And then you see mine is that third one down. This is in degrees. So I want this set in degrees, and then I'm going to go quit is right, it's probably hard to see, but it's right above the mode button. So I'm going to go second, and then mode, so I hit the second button, so it'll be, do the superscript. Or you could just turn your calculator off and on or something. But now I'll put in tangent of 83, and I can see, okay, the 8.14 um, number is the one that I wanted. Okay, so try it on your calculator. If you got the 8 point, and I'm just rounding to the nearest hundredth here. Um, if you got the 8.14 number, then you're in good shape. If you got the 3.88, that means you're in radian mode. You want to be in degree mode, okay? All right, so yeah, you just, some, oh, some calculators, might you might have to hit 83 first and then the tangent button. So just play with your calculator and see which way. You can reproduce this number, then you're set. Okay, so if you're ever borrowing a calculator, especially then you wanna check the, the um, mode. Okay, let's move on to the next page. So what can we do with this? Why do we want to know this? Well, now we can um, solve for, um, for missing sides in certain scenarios. Okay? Notice these are all right triangles. Um, so you, know, you might look at this and think, wait, maybe I can do, um, use a special right triangle. Well, this is not a 30, 60, 90. It's not a 45, 45, 90. So that's a dead end. Pythagorean theorem, but I only really know one of the sides. That's not going to work either. Okay, but I can use the tangent ratio. So here's how it's going to work. You see, in all of these triangles, there is um, an, one of the acute angles is marked with um, with a with a um, a number. Okay, so that's where we want to be. So my little stick figures from the last problem. Obviously, you don't have to draw those in. That's just really for me to explain. But you want to be where the numbers are marked. Okay, not at the right angle. You want to be at the acute marked one. And then I'm going to look at the pieces I'm dealing with. Okay, so the hypotenuse is down here. I'm not going to write that in though because I don't have the hypotenuse isn't marked. But the marked sides, I've got this would be the opposite leg. And then this is going to be the adjacent leg. Okay, so hey, opposite and adjacent, that means I can use the tangent ratio. So I want to write tangent and then I want to indicate where I am. Well, I don't know the name of this angle, but I know the measure of this angle. So instead of saying angle A or whatever that angle may be called, I'm going to call that the tangent of the 25 degree angle. That indicates where I am. Okay? And then the tangent ratio from that place is going to be 12 over x. Okay? Opposite leg is 12, adjacent leg is x. Okay? All right. So now I want to solve this for x. Okay, so um, what I want to do is get rid of the fraction first. Some people are going to multiply both sides by 12, but that won't actually work because that's not going to get rid of the fraction. Then I just have 144 over x on this side. That's no good because multiplying by 12 is the same as multiplying by 12 over 1. So I actually want to multiply by x on both sides. Okay, then these will cancel, and now I have x tangent of 25 degrees equals 12, okay? Now I want to solve, and so that x is just going to be the, a, a, a coefficient. I'm going to put that in front. It's not, the x doesn't go in there, because this is the inside of the tangent. I'm just multiplying that whole side of the equation by x. Now I'm going to divide the whole equation by the tangent of 25 degrees to get the x by itself. Okay, so then x is going to equal 12 over the tangent of 25 degrees. Okay, and I can solve that with my calculator, but before we get to that, I'm going to show you a special maneuver. So um, I invented this, but I'm okay with you using it. It's called the incredible switch. So when we have a situation like this, this comes up a lot in trigonometry where we have a variable and a denominator. So the incredible switch, when I got that variable in the denominator, 
credible switch, you're going to get something equivalent if you just switch those two positions. Okay, so, all right, so those are going to be equivalent, okay? So it really just saves you one step, but, you know, then there's less that can go wrong. You can just switch them like that. And now I'm going to solve this. It's the same thing I got right there, right? But I just want to show you why this works, okay? So I'd want to make sure I'm in um, degree mode because I'm dealing with degrees. Um, some calculators you might want to put in the tangent of 25 degrees first and then take 12 and divide by that decimal. You can type the whole thing in. The more of the decimal you use, the better, closer to the truth you'll be, okay? I'm going to press... This might be hard to see here, but above that negative symbol right there, it says ANS for answer. So if I hit second and then negative, then I don't have to retype. It's going to use my last answer in that position. It's kind of handy. Okay. You could also say 12 divided by tangent 25. You've got a calculator like this, but depending on your calculator, that may or may not work. Okay. So you might have to do tangent 25 first and then do the division. So I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth. I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth in this entire chapter every time I've got a decimal like this. So that's going to be about 25.73. Okay. And, you know, you can use Incredible Switch for free. I'll give you, a, I'll say six months you can use it for free, and then after that there will be a, a recurring charge. Um, but, yeah, you can use it free for now to, to uh, just uh, a little trial, okay? Then after that, hopefully I should start getting rich off of that. Okay. All right, so you can go ahead and try this one out. Actually, you can try all of them out. They're all the same kind of deal. I'm just going to start doing them. So um, I'm thinking, okay, I'm over here. So I'm at the 41-degree angle. Okay. Opposite is going to be x, adjacent is 5. So opposite goes on top, adjacent goes on bottom. Now, doing the incredible switch here, um, you can do it if you like, but then I'm just going to have 5 equals x over the tangent of 41 degrees. So it's not going to get me any closer to solving the equation. I don't have a variable on bottom. Okay, So this wouldn't be a good time to use the, tangent, the incredible switch. I'm just going to multiply both sides by 5, and then I'll have the variable isolated, okay? And then I've got something I can put in my calculator. Again, you might have to type that in first and then multiply your result by five. Try to avoid rounding as long as you can. So if you did do it like this, take whatever your answer is. Don't round that to 0.8 or, or 0.9 would be a better round, but don't round it at all. Just take your result and multiply it by five, okay? Or depending on your calculator, sometimes you can just type it in as is, and then I've got a pretty good decimal approximation. Now I'm going to round it to the nearest hundred. If you're rounding everything as you go, you'll get further and further from the truth. So use as much of the decimals as you can as you go. Okay. All right. Next up, now I'm down here. Opposite would be 13, adjacent is x. So I'm at the 13 or 32 degree angle, 13 over x. This would be a good time for incredible switch because I got that variable on bottom. So here's my next little shortcut. X is going to equal 13 over the tangent of 32 degrees. Okay, and then I'm just going to type it in as is. 13 divided by tangent of 32 degrees, about 20.80. If your teacher were to ever ask you for the exact value, this is rounded, right? This is approximate. My exact value is actually just 13 over tangent of 32 degrees. I can't really simplify that any further without a calculator and without um, rounding it. I'm only going to ask you for to the nearest um, hundredth or maybe tenth, depending on the your book might ask to the nearest tenth. I'm not sure. Okay, so opposite and adjacent, so let's see, tangent of 20 degrees is going to equal x over 10. I don't want incredible switch here because it's not going to isolate the x, so instead I'm going to do this. Okay, those will cancel. 
So again, if you needed the exact value, there it is. I can't do anything more with that. Okay, and then I've got about 3.64 to the nearest hundredth. And that is it. And I'll see you next time.